All right, joining us now is the Ambassador of Israel to India, His Excellency uh, Ambassador Naur Gilan. Thank you very much, sir, for speaking with us here on CNN News 18. Uh, first of all, our deep condolences and sympathies with the victims and their families. Uh, we've all been watching in utter horror uh, the kind of images that have been coming in from Israel. Uh, first things first, can you tell us what is the situation on ground uh, as it exists today? Uh, are all uh, Israeli citizens safe? Are there still hostages? What is, the, what is the situation on the ground as per your best understanding? Good evening, Zaka, and thank you very much for your warm words. Uh, if I can go a little bit uh, to Saturday morning, uh, one of the most holiest uh, Jewish holidays, very early in the morning where people are, Saturday also, people are sleeping in their beds. There was a dual attack perpetrated by the terror organization Hamas from Gaza. They uh, started bombarding with uh, rockets and missiles all along uh, uh, the uh, communities, Jewish communities around the Gaza Strip. And uh, in parallel, uh, close to 1,000 terrorists from Gaza infiltrated more than 30 uh, Jewish communities. And uh, unfortunately, the number of the horror there is incredible, the atrocities, uh, ISIS type of behavior. They killed women, children, elderly, uh, almost 1,000 people. They kidnapped another close to 150, close to 3,000 wounded. Uh, among the dead, uh, more than 250 youngsters who were in an open party music festival carnival uh, not far from Gaza. Uh, they just butchered them and shot them. Uh, and that's it, more or less, uh, the situation. It took us uh, close to 24 hours to regain control of everything, to go from house to house, to look for the hunt the terrorists, save some of the hostages that were still there. Uh, so far, they have shot at Israel uh, uh, more than 5,000 rockets and missiles. And uh, Israel is, at this stage, retaliating very strongly for the time being through uh, our air force, but uh, we are preparing also big ground forces around Gaza. Uh, Ambassador, just uh, uh, sometime back earlier today, the Prime Minister of Israel and the Prime Minister of India, uh, Mr. Netanyahu and Mr. Modi, spoke via telephone. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about what uh, went on in that conversation and also, more <coughs> importantly, what your views are on the unequivocal support you have received from the government and the Prime Minister tweeted right away in the first few hours uh, of Saturday itself. Uh, your thoughts on both, please. Yes, uh, Prime Minister Modi ji was uh, very early among the first uh, leaders in the world to uh, show condolences and support to Israel. Already in the Saturday afternoon where the figures of the disaster were not even known to the fullest at the time. Uh, and the amount of support uh, we got here at all levels, uh, ministers, politicians, high-level civil servants, uh, very important businessmen, uh, the people, the, the, the common Indian from the street, the number of, of, of uh, support messages and asking to come and volunteer that we get on the social media is unprecedented. I mean, Israel is trending here in social media since Saturday morning and, the, and support to Israel and everything. I, I in my total uh, long career, never in a few countries, never saw something like that. Really, really incredible. And today, I think that uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu wanted to update Prime Minister Modi about the situation and our thinking uh, to the future and how we see the situation. But I think it's better be kept the details uh, to the meeting itself because uh, we don't want to expose any of our intentions for the coming uh, weeks. Uh, I also want to know your thoughts about, you know, clearly Israel has the right to defend itself. Uh, it is taking action as it deems fit to secure itself and its citizens. Uh, there are concerns that people are also raising about the siege of Gaza. There's no food or electricity going in there. Uh, and also, how are you going to distinguish between Hamas elements and civilians 
uh, who may be bearing the brunt of uh, Israel's response. Yes, uh, well, I think that uh, terror, terror organizations, there is only one way to stop them, and this is to eliminate their, uh, th them or their abilities to attack you, and that's what we have to do. The magnitude of this attack on Israel now is unprecedented, and I'm saying there are atrocities and pictures there that are, we know them only from ISIS, the cruelty uh, taking women of uh, 85, 90 years old and children of less than one year old in captivity to Gaza, and, and things are terrible. And now we have to uh, uh, make sure that uh, Hamas is unable to re do that, to repeat that again in the future, and that's what we are going to do. From past experience, there are a few elements that we already know. Hamas, after uh, 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 starting these, uh, these atrocities, they will now become the wi victims. That's the way in order to protect themselves and have countries, uh, you know, say, oh, please come and save us now. Uh, this is one element that it's always there. So the perpetrator becomes the victim in 10 seconds in order to protect himself. And the other thing is that in the past, they used their own population as uh, human shields. So they used to shoot outside of, uh, of their uh, civilian population, by the way, hoping that we will hit civilian population and there will be international pressure on us to stop. We are not going to stop. We do, we do the utmost not to hurt uh, civilian population. This time it's even more complicated because they have around 150 uh, hostages. By the way, many of the dead and the hostages are foreign nationals. Not all of them are Israelis. Among the dead, there are quite a few Thai and Nepalese and Filipinos and people from the U.S. citizens that are missing and the European citizens. So it's a very complex thing. And uh, they already threatened to execute, ex execute the hostages. So it's going to be very complicated. We do our utmost uh, to differentiate between terrorist and civilian population, but it's very hard uh, when the opponent is doing intentionally shooting out of hospitals, having their headquarters under hospitals, uh, schools, mosques, uh, hoping that we will hit them and be under international pressure to stop. Have you found any leads or indications of uh, the role of outside elements, whether it's Hezbollah mm -hmm. or its backers, Iran, uh, and if you have, what may that mean? Because are we then looking at Israel going after not just Hamas, the perpetrators of what we saw on Saturday, but also uh, the forces that are backing them? Uh, are we looking at a wider regional conflict? So, uh, you know, the intelligence uh, was not that good. That's one of the things we'll have to look into afterwards. So I'm not sure that at this stage we can uh, make a direct link either to Iran or to Hezbollah, although... Uh, in open sources, they met quite a few times uh, in Lebanon, in other places, and uh, this is known. But what is very clear is the fact that Iran, for a very long time, is helping Hamas arm, uh, giving them technologies and uh, uh, knowledge, and training their people. And we can see what Hezbollah in the north, which is a proxy of Iran, uh, is doing to heat the border, uh, yesterday there were five infiltrations uh, into uh, attempts on infiltration into Israel. They were exchanged. We were able to kill uh, most of the people. We also lost uh, an officer. Uh, so these countries, uh, Iran is clearly uh, involved in destabilizing uh, the area. To your question uh, of, uh, yeah. No, go ahead, please finish your finish your thought. To your question of whether we will uh, uh, go after others, other countries, others, I will just remind everyone that after the horrific uh, massacre of the Israeli athletes in Munich in 1972, Israel, the government, the Prime Minister, then Golda Meir, took a decision to find each and one, any, any, every one of them and uh, bring them to justice. And uh, sometimes justice was uh, meeting a bullet. This might be justice too. But I think that Israel has this DNA of uh, going after the people wherever they are, not giving them any possibility to hide. Uh, and we are very persistent about it.
terrorists must be stopped, one way or another. Uh, Ambassador, I also want to know from you an update on the status of Indian citizens who are living and working in Israel. There are about 15,000 plus of them, many of them in IT, some of them in the medical field. Uh, are, 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 is every one of them safe and, and fine and accounted for? So we don't have the full figure so far. We don't know of any Indians who were killed or hijacked uh, to, uh, uh, into Gaza. Uh, there, are, uh, there is a likelihood that uh, one person uh, was uh, injured, uh, but this is, we, we are looking into this thing, but uh, thanks God so far, and I hope it stays like that, no, uh, no Indian casualties uh, in, this, in this terrible event. Uh, uh, Ambassador, is there anything by way of support uh, that you're looking for from India and also from the wider international community uh, in what is clearly one of the most challenging times for your country and your people in recent times? Yes, Zaka. I, I will tell you that I think that the biggest support that we can get from the world today is the support and understanding uh, of the need to fight terror to the fullest. I think this is very, very important. I, I'm sure that you follow that the Americans have sent a carrier fleet into the Mediterranean, uh, sending the message to Iran and its proxies, especially Hezbollah, uh, not to interfere in this event. We don't want anyone to fight for us. We never, never, always, uh, never asked anyone to fight or spill blood for us. We always knew that the only way to survive is to do it by yourself. I'm sure that if the war will get longer and complicated, Israel will need probably a re refilling of its uh, arms and uh, ammunition. But this is not here yet. Uh, and I think that the American support is really amazing. Always have been, but this time also very much amazing. And I'm sure that also India is on the side of Israel and for whatever, anything that we would need. I also want to know your thoughts, Ambassador. Uh, one of the recent features in the Middle East was Israel's normalization of ties with its <coughs> Arab neighbors, whether it was with the United Arab Emirates, with Bahrain, and of course, in recent weeks, there was a lot of talk about normalization between Saudi Arabia and Israel. What happens to that now? So, uh, first of all, I think that the Middle East today, uh, or West Asia, as you would call it, is a different place than uh, it was three years ago before the Abraham Accords. Because the Abraham Accords is a game changer. It started with UAE and Bahrain, and then uh, Morocco and Sudan joined. And this is building a new future uh, for the region. And yes, they are talk and we did the I2U2, which is the business side of, of this, and trying to, we are speaking now of adding Saudi Arabia and doing also a corridor from India uh, through Saudi Ar the Gulf, Saudi Arabia, into Israel and the Mediterranean. So we do, with the countries with goodwill who are trying to improve the lives of their citizens are working together in order to make it a better place. Of course, countries who are against that and are quite many, Iran is one of them, but Iran is not the only one, they, ha they have a good uh, incentive and they are hoping that what happened now with Hamas, this terrible attack, will lead to, uh, uh, in the, f to, to Saudi Arabia pulling away. Uh, I think, by the way, that these extremists, is Islamic ex extremists, uh, political Islamic extremists, are dangerous for all the moderate regimes in the Middle East, be it in the Gulf, be it in Saudi Arabia, be it in Egypt and our neighborhood, Jordan, wherever it is. I think these are the enemies of stability and, and prosperity. So if we are going to hit these people who, uh, you know, unprovokedly attacked us in a very, very, very vicious manner, uh, it's going to serve the purpose of the moderates, I think, in the Middle East. I hope that Saudi Arabia will see it this way and will continue uh, with this very important uh, uh, way of getting closer to Israel and changing the Middle East even more. Saudi Arabia is a very important uh, country in the region, very big, very influential, and I would hope that they will join the camp of the moderate countries uh, together with India, which is working with us, and make, make our world a better place and our region a better place. All right. And Ambassador, one final word. Uh, what is the end objective for Israel here? Clearly, mm -hmm. you've launched 
a <coughs> massive uh, counter operation. There are airstrikes. There is a massive mobilization of ground troops. Uh, the safety of Israeli citizens, of course, is number one priority for the Israeli government. Uh, what would be your end objective? When do you come to that conclusion that Hamas is now not in a position to launch attacks on Israeli citizens? So, uh, I, I mean, Israel, uh, for the time being, we haven't declared uh, the end game. Clearly, we said, and we mean it, that we want to make sure that we neutralize Hamas's ability to attack again and to do the same uh, horrors. So, what, how it will be executed, uh, this we leave to the imagination of Hamas because I don't want them to be too comfortable in, in guessing or knowing what we are going to do. So our final aim is to make sure that what happened now will never happen, not to Israel, not to others, that Hamas will not have this capacity. And this will be the end, the end goal. How it will be achieved, we leave it to the imagination and the fears of our, of our adversaries. All right, uh, Ambassador Nao Gilon, as always, a pleasure speaking with you, sir. And once again, our thoughts and prayers and sympathies with the families of the victims of Saturday's attack. Thank you for speaking with us. Thank you, Zaka.